Welcome to Sophia's Schoolhouse. Today, we are going to look at a very interesting primary source from the American Revolution. But before we dig into the primary sources, we need to make sure we know the difference between wigs and Tories. Now, when I say wigs, I don't mean the thing you wear on your head. Wigs, W-H-I-G-S, were the folks during the American Revolution who wanted independence from Great Britain. They were also known as patriots and rebels. On the other hand, you had the Tories. The Tories were loyal subjects of the British crown. They wanted to remain a part of Great Britain. They were also known as loyalists, and after the American Revolution, they were known as traitors. Now, I have a challenge for you today. I'm going to share with you a primary source from the American Revolution, and I want you to guess if it was written by a Whig or a Tory. I'm gonna help you out by reading a few excerpts and giving you some background information on the document. What I have in front of me is a handwritten manuscript from the American Revolution. Now there's some mystery surrounding this document. We don't have a record of who donated it to the Georgia Historical Society or when. We do know that it was written sometime before June 14, 1782. That's the very last date mentioned in the document. Thankfully, the Georgia Historical Society published a transcript of this document in a book called Collections of the Georgia Historical Society, Volume 20. This will be really helpful for us in reading the document Plus, it's safer for the original if we don't handle it too much. The document is clearly incomplete. There's even a few parts where the author left a blank space. Let me show you some examples. In the very first line, the author writes, We return your excellency our hearty thanks for the very satisfactory answer you have pleased to give us to our address of the blank. And later, it reads, Many more have been obliged to take refuge in swamps, where numbers continue hid to this hour. And since the fall of Augusta, not less than blank, of men, women, and children from the interior parts of the country have been obliged to fly from their comfortable habitations to Savannah naked and destitute even of the necessities of life. It's almost like the author in that case wanted to figure out the correct number and come back later and put it in, like you might do when you're writing a draft document. The document also doesn't have a clear conclusion. Instead, the author writes notes about what he would add there. Let me read it to you. Here, I think, should be briefly mentioned the several acts passed for supporting His Majesty's government and strengthening the hands of government. Also the substance of the several addresses on the same subject and of the governor's answers. So here the author gives notes about what should be in the conclusion without actually concluding. Okay, have you figured out yet if this was written by a Whig or a Tory? No, need a little more help? Let me read some excerpts for you. Unhappily for these loyal inhabitants of Georgia, your repeated and earnest applications to the commanders of His Majesty's forces in America have been so far neglected that no adequate assistance has been given us, and that in consequence of it there is the greater danger of the province being totally lost. We therefore, at this alarming crisis, think it an indispensable duty we owe to ourselves and constituents to state to your excellency and through you to our most gracious sovereign from what causes we conceive those evils have originated which hath reduced this province to its present humiliating and miserable situation. The obstinate and determined spirit of rebellion, which neither harsh nor lenient measure could conquer, will be largely insisted on and painted in the strongest colors. How far this has operated in South Carolina, it is not our business particularly to inquire into. But whatever may be alleged with respect to them, general disaffection cannot with even a shadow of justice be imputed to the people of Georgia, who have given the strongest and most unequivocal proofs in the power of men to give of their firm attachment to the British government. Witness the great numbers who have submitted to every species distress, the most shocking to human nature, rather than depart from their loyalty. So, 
What do you think? Was this document written by Whigs or Tories? If you guess Tories, then you're absolutely correct. Now, whoever wrote this didn't sign it, so I don't know for sure. But it's very clear to me that the author, or maybe authors, wanted to make it obvious that one, they did everything they could to support the British during the war, and two, that it was not their fault that the British were losing the war. I think maybe this was a draft letter to James Wright. James Wright was the governor of the royal colony of Georgia before the American Revolution ended. Some loyalists decided to pledge allegiance to the new United States of America. Others fled and went to places like Canada or the West Indies, some back to Britain. The United States passed laws allowing for the confiscation of loyalist property. They then sold that property to help fund the expenses of the war. Now, we only scratched the surface of this very interesting document. I hope you're interested and want to learn more. The great news is that the book, Collections of the Georgia Historical Society, Volume 20, are digitized, and you can read it on archive.org. We'll see you next time on Sophia's Schoolhouse. Mm -hmm.